Brenda Powell, was well known in the community both as a person and as a professional. Her 28-year career at Akron Children's Hospital was well known. She specialized in childhood cancer and blood disorders. Sidney Powell, her daughter, was the source of immense joy in her life, and they were known to share a strong, close-knit bond. Therefore, it becomes even more difficult to comprehend the tragic events of March 3, 2020, when Sidney tragically ended her own mother's life. Sidney Powell had faced academic suspension from the University of Mount Union in December 2019 due to poor grades, a matter she chose to keep discreet. She continued to reside in her dormitory accommodation until staff discovered that she was still attending classes and participating in sorority meetings, despite having received written notice of her expulsion. University staff arranged an in-person meeting with her to convey the necessity for her to vacate the dormitory and discontinue attending classes. They also informed her that her access card key would be deactivated. On February 24, she departed from her dormitory, opting to stay in hotels before eventually returning to her Akron residence on the day when the tragic incident occurred. It was during this time that she chose to confide in her father about her actions, prompting him to ask her mother to address the situation as he departed for work. Brenda placed a phone call to the school, seeking to have a conversation with someone regarding the suspension. This action was likely driven by her desire to either resolve the situation to enable her daughter to continue her education or, at the very least, gain insight into the available options. Nevertheless, law enforcement was notified when an employee from Mount Union University made a call to Brenda's residence and detected a disturbance characterized by raised voices and intense shouting in the background. They reported hearing a loud noise, followed by additional screams and thumping sounds. Despite making two subsequent attempts to reach out, the employee received no response and promptly alerted the authorities. That very evening, the police responded to her residence and found the 50-year-old woman with severe injuries. Wait, she's, in, she's in the ground. So there is Who is it? My mom! There's someone broke in the back window. All right, hold on. She's on the ground. And there's, 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 hold on. She was transported to Cleveland Clinic Akron General Hospital but tragically succumbed to her injuries at a later time. Police also discovered Sidney Powell in a distressed condition with blood on her person. It is alleged that she caused her mother's demise by striking her with a cast iron frying pan and inflicting repeated harm with a steak knife. Sidney Powell informed the authorities that an intruder had entered their residence and insisted that she evacuate. She additionally asserted that their home had been unlawfully accessed. Prosecutors, however, assert that the 23 year old deliberately shattered a window to create the appearance of a break in. Nevertheless, based on the information at hand, Sidney was swiftly apprehended and accused of her mother's murder, leaving everyone who knew her profoundly astonished. They emphasized that there were no preceding indicators or indications that she was capable of committing such a dreadful act. Closing arguments in her trial took place this week, with her defense asserting that she was mentally unstable at the time of the homicide. The prosecution, on the other hand, rejects this notion, contending that she was grappling with the stress of concealing a web of lies, inevitably leading to anxiety. Their perspective is that she lost her temper and tragically vented it on her unfortunate mother. You got to see a, a portion of the body-worn camera, 90 seconds of edited clips that Dr. Reardon watched with us. I mean, there's hours and hours and hours of clips from this incident, of body-worn camera footage, I should say. So we saw a brief 90 seconds with Dr. Reardon. And in that 90 seconds, the edited clips, catatonic, catatonia, absolutely. And there's no doubt, we saw the same clips that you did, that Miss Powell has completely shut down. But what Dr. Reardon fails to acknowledge is the moments before she tips over, the moments before she stops talking. Because when police arrive, she's immediately able to communicate with them. Is my mom okay? Is she going to be okay? There was a break-in. We heard a bang. She's immediately telling her story. And when Officer Jackson gets to her, are you hurt? No. Okay, well, let's go outside. I want my dad. I want my dad. And when Mr. Powell shows up, Dad, there was a break-in. There was a break-in. We heard a bang. She's communicating. She even tells Officer Jackson when he tries to sit her down, well, you told me to sit on the ground. She's listening. She's responding. 
And finally, at some point, the shock catches up to her. She has just gone through something brutally horrific, the murder of her mom at her own hands. It catches up. She shuts down. But that catatonia does not automatically mean that she didn't know the wrongfulness of her actions that day. And Dr. Reardon, he does a, philosoph- or sorry, a, a psychological autopsy. That's what he referred it to as, and it's something we've heard before. And this is where he comes up with the whole theory that she's in a full psychotic break the week of February 24th to February 23rd. Yet everyone in her life doesn't recognize it. Nobody notices it in her text messages, in her sharing of memes, in her communication with friends, in her hangout with friends. The day of the murder, just over an hour before she take her mom's life, in what Dr. Reardon says is a full psychotic break, she's able to communicate with her dad, Mr. Stephen Powell. So much that he returns to work, later telling police that she was 100% fine. But Dr. Reardon wants you to believe that that was in the midst of a full-blown, berserk, psychotic break. No one else noticed. 